Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of PHT TV. Hey. Got Trey back here with me. Awesome back. <laughs> uh, he came back specifically to do these compares. So this week we're going to do the RP 6000 F's versus the RP 8000 F's. And next week we're going to do the RP 8000 F's versus the RF 7's. Yeah, I look forward to all these. <laughs> the stair step here is just that, a stair step. It is a definite difference between them physically. Fit and finish are all perfect compared to each other, but quite a bit of difference in physical size. Mm -hmm. Cabinet volume as well as driver size. Now the, the tweeter is identical between both units. We have the one inch titanium tweeter in both units. The horn, unit. yeah. the horn is a little bit different. Horn's a little different, I think. Uh, it's still 90 by 90. Yeah, if you tried to put the horn from the 8000 into the 6000, it would exceed the edges of the cabinet. <laughs> Physical so. size of the horn is different, yes. Mm -hmm. I think the, the coverage pattern of the horns are virtually the same. Uh, obviously, because of that, cutoff frequency can be different on the two horns. Uh, I didn't look at crossover on these yet. I was I just going to listen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look at that after we listen. We're going to insert that right here or right here. I don't know, wherever I can put text in. I like listening without knowing sometimes and, and just to get a feel of the speaker before I learn anything about it. Just have a, an emotional experience with it before I get into the technical stuff. That's kind of what these are all about. So, <laughs> All right, so um, before we get started, a couple things we want to notate. Um, first off, as per usual, we're going to say do not audition your speakers on YouTube. Go hear them in person if you're planning on buying. Uh, these videos are strictly to hear our commentary about them, our thoughts on the units. Uh, they're not to have you listen to the speakers on YouTube. That said, we did add the mic. Your listening is going to improve slightly over the lapels that we were using last season. The reason we didn't use the mic was because we didn't think it mattered that much. <laughs> <laughs> because you're going to need to hear these guys in person before, uh, before making your purchase decision anyways. So. But it, it could make the video sound a little better while you're listening to it on whatever, having a better signal from the music. So hopefully it makes it a little more enjoying. Yeah. Uh, enjoyable. That's the whole intent is to make it a little more enjoyable, not necessarily to give a a this one sounds better than that one experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely will not do that. Definitely go listen to them in person before you make your purchase decision, though. Uh, the other thing is we get requests all the time. Hey, you guys should have played this. You should have played that. We do. We just do it off camera because we don't want to be sued for millions of dollars by <laughs> using using. Uh, we don't, music. we don't have money to pay ASCAP to get that music. We sure don't have money to pay the lawyers of ASCAP for playing that music. <laughs> exactly. So we're going to put a link down below to show you guys what else we're listening to off camera to make these decisions. And a big shout out to the artists that allow us to lose, use their music. It, it's uh, a strictly uh, loving affair there. They, they love to see their music out in public and we love to have royalty free good quality recordings. So the the guys at the different studios and the different music artists that allow us to do this, a, a big hat tip. For sure, it has definitely improved. Uh, early on, uh, one, some of our first listenings, we tried to do it with <laughs> royalty-free music that we got just basically like elevator music in the background. <laughs> it wasn't overly successful. I like this significantly better. It works that way. Yeah, there wasn't a lot you could tell from that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's all the notes that I had. Um, well, it's been a quite a while. I mean, we can go back for people that are just kind of joining in the, into the channel and give a history of what's going on. You know, maybe there are some people out there who hadn't listened or watched any of the others and just see this one. So a quick, uh, you know, I'm Trey Cannon. I work for Klipsch. I've been working for them for 22 plus years now. Uh, I've done everything from engineering, system design, tech support, customer service, I mean, a little bit of everything with the company. Um, I currently design audio systems for a little bit of anything, whether it's a home or a stadium or a, a cinema or, or whatever. Um, and you worked and, and played with us at Clips for a while in the customer service dealer services yeah. department. I was at Clips for a few years. Um, and then for a while after I was at Clips, I, I created a lot of the videos for Clips, for Clips advertising and so forth, uh, diving into the speakers themselves. I beta tested for clips for a while. I did a lot of that. So 
I have a lot of experience with this as well, not nearly as much as Trey. That's why we like to have him on board. <laughs> uh, I, have, I do have a lot of experience sitting in front of speakers and doing listenings with all the engineering team for the last 20 years, mm -hmm. the different people from engineering, and learning how, how the engineers do their thing uh, that have designed a lot of these products helps you understand what you're listening to and how, you're li how you should listen. Different cuts in two-channel music that I... I use because that's what a lot of the other engineers have used for the last 20 years. And yeah, it does make the music older and different than what may be current, but there are specific things in certain cuts that you know are there from the engineering people that put it there. You know it's there, you know? And you've heard it on other systems, so you know for a fact it's there. And when you hear or don't hear that on uh, one of these speakers, or one of these systems when you play back, it is very telling. You recognize that it's missing or that something's there that you hadn't heard before or something. You know, your audio memory is very short, but your emotional memory is very, it's got a long, long standing memory. So when you get that emotional contact with, you know, Bonnie Raitt's scratchy voice in that particular song, and you, it, 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 you remember that emotion, if you don't get that same emotion the next time, something's missing. Then you go looking for the technical side, you know, and that's how the art and the science blend together to try to figure out how these, how to get these things to sound good. Mm -hmm. And, and the guys, I tell you, hats off to everybody that I've ever worked with at, at Klipsch. They've all been really good engineers, except for that one that, that one engineer wished okay. he could have fired a second time. So <laughs> we won't talk about him. Right. <laughs> good, good transition. Let's dive into some music here. So. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So what do you want to start with? <laughs> <laughs> I leave it on you, you leave it on me, and we won't listen to any music. <laughs> it sounds like our wives are having conversation what we're doing for dinner. Oh, uh, let's talk about, uh, real quick, it is going from the NAD-T778 into the QSC ABX switcher, directly into the speakers. So it's, it's a little bit of headroom. We're not touching anywhere close to the max yeah. volume of this thing. We're playing in idle mode. So it, it's, it's very tame. We're in a very clean spot of that amplifier. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are pushing enough to get those woofers moving because we wanna, we wanna see that bass response, so. Well, yeah, 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 we're probably. Well, tame to us is probably 85. <laughs> <laughs> tame to us is not necessarily what other might consider tame. We, you still might piss off a few neighbors. <laughs> yeah, we both moved out into the middle of nowhere, staying away from other people so that we don't have to be tame anymore. <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> if you can move away from those neighbors, you can see the true potential of your speaker. <laughs> <laughs> the big push right. for country living. Yes. So you wanna you wanna start with yeah, Let's do start. country living. That's, that's a good thing. Start with country living. Jason Helms. Uh, Jason is an Arkansas artist. Uh, He's been in and out of bands for over the years. This particular group that's playing on the cut we're listening to is no longer together, but all super good dudes. Um, but Jason wrote this song himself for his wife. Jason Helms Band, My Kind of Woman. That's a, this is a good chance to do a tech tip, mm -hmm. just in middle. You, we were sitting together, you weren't getting stereo in your chair. Yeah, I was feeling pretty heavy left, so. And, and I was really nice. I mean, I had a good stereo image. He was coming dead center out of the center of the screen, bottom center of the screen, and you weren't getting that. So we swapped chairs, 
you heard what I was hearing, realized, so we got up and we retoed the speakers a little bit, changed the angle of the speaker so that they were shooting a little more at that's just the chairs beside us instead of at us. So they're crossing behind us further, which opens up the sound stage and allowed both of us to get a better center channel. Just a little bit too. I'm gonna to show a before and after here so you can see this is before, this is after. This is kind of just a very minimal change could make all the difference. And it was, it was not that I wasn't satisfied. I was. Sitting in that chair, I wouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was very one-sided. So being able to tow that just a little bit so that the, both people can get a good... A, it's not as perfect as it would be if it, you were dead center and you were the only chair, mm -hmm. but it makes it a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, so if, you have a, if you're setting up your theater at home, sit in every chair while you're listening. Make sure everybody's going to get the same experience as you are. Don't just sit in your chair and think that everybody's going to be happy. <laughs> and, and think, you know, everybody goes back to that equilateral triangle for the center. Okay, but if there's two people, then you can't do that one spot. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do that one spot, you better do it back here so that these two people both get part of that. It you may not be 100%, but if you get 80% for both instead of, you know, 160. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad math. No, 100% here, and then you're only getting 60% of your whatever. Okay, I didn't follow. Well, you're gonna get. You're not gonna get 80, and then this I, I was gonna say 60, 20. 40, but that's yeah. That's. <laughs> but if you aim for 100, you're getting 100 perfect. It's not like this dude's not hearing anything. <laughs> Your distance from from where you want to be is is further. Less perfect. Less perfect. <laughs> okay, that digressed. Anyways, <laughs> let's get back into this music. All right. I didn't, I didn't think that that made much of a difference. So I don't think we're off, off target, up or down. That's what you saw what I was doing. I was trying to listen to the upper range starts to open up a little bigger in the 
HF on the 8K more than the 6K. And I was going up and down to see if maybe the vertical uh, coverage pattern is what where we were running into issues. Because you're five inches shorter, four inches shorter, something like that, just visually looking at it. Did the clips was, compensate for that with the riser change, though? I don't know. The, the riser tilting the speaker back helps with that just a little. A little because the way we towed the speakers, we're both a little off axis from both cabinets. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was thinking that maybe the difference in that openness in the 8K versus the 6K's top end, upper mid range top end, would be uh, different if I got down a little closer to the acoustic center of the speaker. Mm -hmm. So, would it make sense to rise, raise the speaker up to be the same height as the eight? Would it solve that problem? Mm. By squatting down, I didn't hear that difference. As yeah, you said, you didn't, didn't either. either. So I wonder if there's gonna be the same difference going up. That should be an interesting note. Yeah, because the RF7's got, an, what, another three inches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll see. And check out, uh, check out something else. Let's listen else. to something else. Maybe it was just the cut. All right, uh, let's let's get those woofers moving. You want to do hot Ooh. potato? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do some Matt <laughs> Summers. All right, this is Matt Summers. It's called Hot Potato. Another Clips employee. Yep. It's almost like the the resonance of the resonance of the larger cabinet. We lose something in that in that song, so we get the uh, the more focus yeah. on the high frequencies of the lower or the smaller cabinet. Kind of a drone mm -hmm. uh, from the eight. Uh, I don't know if it's hitting a resonance peak in that woofer or if it's just there's that much more 
E string on the bass guitar in that speaker. So you think the, the lower frequencies are over overpowering the. Yeah, the it seems like the mix is almost different because of the two speakers, but mm -hmm. but it's not. We obviously are listening to the same mix. Yeah. So the uh, the obvious difference is in the speaker. I I think the six actually handled that song better than the eight. Uh, That's kind of feeling because of the mid band that that upper upper bass response, lower mid band. Uh, you know, that 500 hertz, 700 hertz area, it was, you know, 400 to 700 hertz area was a little too fat, you know. Um, you know what, something that, I'm, that we're thinking about here, if you, if you just take a step back, that sixes port is a little smaller, so it's not gonna push as hard through the port, it's, can get by with being a little closer to the wall, it may be that was because of those speakers are so close to the wall. Hmm. Getting a little bit more port noise. Mm -hmm. Well, you're loading that port. Mm -hmm. So you're, because it's so close to the wall, you're basically extending the length of the port a distance. Yeah, Virtually the distance of the background. width of that cabinet on both sides as the port comes around, right? Mm -hmm. Is that wrap? So you're, you're extending the port that distance for lack of a better way to say it. And doing so, you tune the speaker a little differently. <laughs> and that may be what's causing our drone. Mm -hmm. It may be worthwhile going back and, and as another, f just to test, is p play that cut last again. And the last thing we'll do is we'll move that speaker away from the wall and see if it still does the same thing. Okay. Just for fun, just to see. Because I don't want to talk poo-poo about the speaker, but on that cut, the six did a better job. Before we do any of that, though, let's leave it at the same positioning and uh, try a different cut. Maybe we'll do that towards the end. Oh, that's what I said. Yeah. They do it at the very end and then pull it out and see if we can hear a difference then, just to, just for giggles and grins. Giggles and grins. This is Dracon, the value of all. Raycon, the value of all. That's intense. Eight thousands definitely took that for me. Yeah, the uh, the the sixes were a little anemic in the mid band, and it's all again I think in that five to eight hundred eight hundred uh, hertz range uh, because the I don't know if it like I said the the loading of it or how it's as just set up in the room or. The room itself, or what? But there is a definite, a definite difference between the two in that bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Now, the bottom end, that very bottom note, I, I wasn't having a problem with either one of them. No, then the very no. bottom note. The, I was the, shocked. Yeah, yeah I, I do. I noticed you went back and forth a couple of times and kind of <laughs> raised an eyebrow. 
So uh, you were hearing the same thing I did. I think the uh, that very bottom note or the the kick drum on the very bottom it was it was fine on both units, but it was that mid band lower lower mid band upper bass response region that that uh, that was giving me the the funkiness. Mm -hmm. And we said uh, we said we're going to do some low volume listening again. To us, that may be different than somebody else's low volume listening. We're not listening whisper quiet. You can still feel the thumping in your chest, even at our low volume <laughs> listening tests. But, but yeah, I was, uh, I'm impressed by the six. I think we got one more before we pull them out. Let's do, uh, you want to do Bring My Baby Home? Sure. All right. This Trey Johnson got Bring My Baby Home. Preference of the eights on that one. Did you? The the eights seem to have a significantly more live sound. I feel like it. Well, it, it the body of the guitar sounded bigger. Yeah, you're right there. But when we started at the six thousands, I didn't think I was going to. I wasn't missing anything again until I got to the eight thousands. Till I transitioned. I think it it happens all the time. I mean, we see people on on the uh, on the forum, uh, the on Facebook and other, everywhere else online. Well, they'll, they'll start with something and then they'll get the bug and they'll move up to something bigger and they'll have them in the house together for a few minutes and go, oh my God, look at the difference. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you, you, it's true. You don't know the difference until you have them side by side. And I don't know that you would miss a thing. Listen to the sixes by themselves in here. Mm -hmm. then, you, then you get the eights. And you're like, oh, I guess I was. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move some stuff around. All right. Intermission. First thing I do is move them away from the wall. On the carpet with it to about mid speaker. All right, so we have moved them out a little bit. Are we starting on sixes or eights? Sixes. We're gonna start on sixes and we're gonna go back to that Matt Summers cut. We're now roughly, what was that, what, about 16? 16 inches from the wall? About 16 inches from the wall. This is coming from about six inches from the wall. So we pulled them up about 10 inches. We're a little bit more towards the center as well. All right, this is Matt Summers, Hot Potato.
Definitely made a difference. Absolutely made a difference. It's not as boomy and fat in that five to eight hundred range. Uh, didn't change my mind on the openness of the eight K versus the six K. Uh, the eight K just just breathes better. <laughs> I mean, all the way out around. Mm -hmm. But you would expect so. It's a bigger, more everything speaker. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's a tear up for a reason. <laughs> that's right. It's a stair step, and that's this is the next step on the in that tread. The uh, the six is no slouch though. So the six K, it's a six thousand F. It's no slouch. Uh, I was listening and almost forgot to swap over <laughs> because I was enjoying it. Yeah, it wasn't a problem. That's but, pretty much all you could ask for. I mean, in a speaker, is you just sit back and. Forget everything else around you. You just enjoy. So. Yeah. So the uh, the the boominess did did reduce as we moved the speakers away from the back wall. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's been told that for folks all around for a long time. It absolutely makes a difference. So it's going to be very preference based, though. Like if you if you enjoy that sound, or depending on the type of music you're listening to. You know, if you're you if you're listening, if you're an '80s hair metal band guy, you may want them a little tight to the wall mm -hmm. because that's going to help boost that that rhythm section in that you know in that music so mm -hmm. it, it it could be beneficial and helpful the way you like to listen mm -hmm. but, uh, i'd say more so the most beneficial thing is like these this is this isn't like food you don't need it in your house this is essentially a big toy so you play know. with your toys move them in and out move them in and out move them around see what sounds best to you with what you listen to that's going to be the best bet Absolutely. It's also room dependent. When you hear something funky and reposition the speaker a little bit and see if that funky goes away or changes, mm -hmm. because that's a technical term, by the way, is funky. Yeah. Uh, the level of funkiness. level of funkiness in there. If you can get the funk out, you know, if you can reduce the amount of those extraneous things in the system brought on by your room. Kind of odd harmonics. Well, yeah, I mean, or or the in this case the boundary gain or the or the uh, uh, the port length because of being tied to the wall or or the the way it bounces on that wall versus not bouncing on anything on that wall, mm -hmm. you know, that, those kinds of things make a huge difference in the symmetrics of an audio system. And if you can keep the symmetrics as close to the same as possible, it tends to work better. Mm -hmm. So if, I, if you say that if this was a great room instead of this symmetrical room that we're in uh, and it was open to one side, the speaker setting to that open side has no boundary all on that one side. Therefore, the boundary gain is going to be less on that side of the room than it would be on the other side of the room. So that that reflection is going to be a lot faster here than it will be there. It's going to funk, funk with you. Funk level. <laughs> Funk level goes up. So I think with this, it's going to be another case of if your if your budget allows and if your space allows, go up to the eight thousands. If it doesn't, and you're debating, you're like, should I have no speakers or should I have the six thousands or if I should have something else? They are not going to leave you wanting. You're going to be happy with them. It gives the capability of so many people to jump in at so many different points. Mm -hmm. So the price ranges are. There's a speaker for everybody. Yeah, that's it. There's a speaker for everybody and a price point for everybody mm -hmm. there. And I don't have heard anything that I've been disappointed with. Yeah. So anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to uh, to dive into the RF7s, see, see where that takes us. After that, you guys saw a unboxing of an amp last week. That is the first of many. We're gonna do a bunch of pair, well, I say we, I don't, you don't, you're not gonna do the Parasound unboxings with me, but I've got a couple of Parasound unboxings to come up, and then we're gonna do some center channel unboxings, and then we're gonna do some center channel tests. Well, unless they're so big you can't do them by yourself. You need extra hands, I'll come help you. Yeah, that JC5 is a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that as you said it, and I'm like, hey, it may take two people to do that. <laughs> Maybe you guys will see Mikey again. You guys remember Mikey? He's yeah. strong, silent type. <laughs> yeah, Mikey's good for that. But anyways, that's all we have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you guys again next week for RF7s. We'll see you after that for some Parasound unboxings and after that for some center channels. I'm Jason. I'm Trey. We'll see you next week for another episode of PHT TV.
That's another thing about jumping up in the tiers and jumping up in the different speaker systems is if if all you've ever listened to is speaker speakers on your TV or speakers on your computer or something like that or just listening to your phone, don't listen to anything else because you're not going to be able to go back again once you realize what oh, the difference is. Oh, it'll ruin you. <laughs> Absolutely ruin you. I mean, I, every, every one of my kids and 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 the wife now, when we walk into a, a restaurant or a store or whatever and there's music playing, it's this thing, looking yeah. for the speaker, figure out who it is and what it is. I mean, Am I going to be able to eat here? <laughs> yeah. I mean, is this going to be a good thing? Does it have good music? I mean, that's obviously they really do that stuff. I mean, it's kind of silly but so if you're if you're happy with listening to your phone then you, you told me the story about you and the wife going on a vacation you get in gonna listen watch a movie in the in the hotel and like we're not gonna do this it sucks too bad <laughs> couldn't even finish a movie because the the, t- the speakers on the tv were just too terrible we couldn't we're sounding spoiled Audio but snobs. It's, yeah a little bit